Hi everyone, it's Anya from DV Lover. I would like to talk to you today about uh, DV blog. Uh, so if you're just starting out with DV, uh, you might be wondering um, how to edit uh, the blog index pages. Uh, by index pages, I mean the posts page you choose in your WordPress uh, settings or the categories, archives and so on. Uh, so it's not possible to edit uh, these pages using the DV Builder and if you don't want to use any additional plugin uh, you have to um, just add some custom code. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I do it in my child themes and for my clients and hopefully you, you'll find it useful. So let's get to it. This is a sample demo page I created for this tutorial. Mm, you've seen it many times, I'm sure. Uh, this is the DV index page. It's uh, the same for each category and it's the same for uh, tags pages, uh, authors pages, uh, search results. And what I would like to do is uh, change this layout, the big picture uh, and the title below it to something what I already did in one of my child themes. Ali Child Theme has, I think, nice looking archive pages. The uh, overlapping effect with the content uh, overlapping the uh, image and uh, the nice overlay. This is what uh, we'll try to recreate. I will be using a simple uh, child theme to uh, add my modifications. You can edit uh, your child theme directly on uh, in the WordPress editor. Uh, you have all the files here, but I will be using um, a different program, my code editor, which uh, I have opened here and it's connected to uh, my server. Uh, so I'll be editing the, the files on, on my server directly here. It will be just easier for me to add my uh, CSS here than to uh, save this page uh, each time I want to add something. So um, one other thing uh, to note is uh, the reading settings. If you, mm, if we navigate to settings, reading, you will most likely want to display a static page for your home page, uh, and you don't need to uh, select this posts page. Uh, but if you do, uh, the customization we'll be doing will apply to this, this page as well. So let's select a uh, blog page I, I created. So let's, uh, let's have a look at our page now. The home page is the sample page and blog page is our index page, which we want to edit. How how should we do it? The one way would be to overwrite the DV index PHP uh, template. You would copy the file from the DV team, add it to your child team, and then um, make your edits there. But um, I do not like this method very much because it requires you to uh, keep track of DV updates and if they update the index PHP file you would need to update your copy in your child team as well. So I'm editing archives using uh, custom CSS and just a little bit of uh, jQuery and let me uh, explain uh, why. So first of all, how do we uh, target this these posts. WordPress by default applies a custom CSS class to, to each, each page. Let me uh, click right click and inspect. It opens up an, um, a Chrome inspector. Sorry, let me 
make this bigger. Um, and what we'll be looking is our, our body tag. As you can see on the blog page, it has a custom CSS class called blog. If we go to category page, the class uh, changes its archive, category, category fashion. It would be different for each category. So we could target our elements differently on uh, each category, but we just want to cover all the archives pages. So it was blog, archive. Let me go to authors page. You'll see it also has the archive author class and tags pages, also archive tag. And if I search for something, the search results page has search CSS class. So these are the three main uh, body CSS classes. We'll be using the search, blog and archive uh, class. Next, we need to find the name for, for this element. And as you can see, each post is an article element with a class of ETPB post. So to target this, we would write our CSS uh, like this. blog article etpb post right it's body with a custom css class blog and we are targeting article with a class etpb post you can add um, your css for um, multiple elements at once if you uh, just separate those with a comma. So we can do the same for archive. And search. That should do it. And let's say, what do we want to change? We want the image to be smaller and we want our content to be on top of that uh, image. But the problem is that uh, we, we don't have a separate container for, for the content. As you can see, each uh, blog post is uh, made with a link that has an image inside, uh, a title, Mm, paragraph for uh, post meta and the post excerpt is actually loose here in the main con container. So uh, the trick is to use JavaScript. We can alter our HTML elements using uh, JavaScript and this is what we'll do. So let me show you how my a child team looks now. So inside my child team folder, I have my style sheet, obviously, and functions PHP file, where I'm loading the uh, DV uh, team style sheet, the parent team style sheet, and also a custom JavaScript file called custom scripts JS. And uh, inside this file, there's an empty uh, jQuery function. And let me uh, paste my code here. So I will make it, uh, I won't make any mistakes here. And let me explain what, 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 we do, what we're doing here. So each um, article with the class etpb post will filtering its content uh, and looking for text nodes, uh, so this loose text, and we'll uh, use the wrap function to wrap it in the paragraph element with a class of 
post uh, content. And then we'll target each of our, oh, that's not right, each of our um, articles on the blog page, archive page and search results page. So for each of those, we'll uh, searching, uh, we'll uh, choosing every element except for an A element, which is a li link, except for that link, we want to wrap everything in a div uh, with a class wrapped. Let me save that. And now if I refresh uh, the page, you will see that uh, the structure for our article has changed. Now inside each article we have an A element, like it was before, but also div with a class wrapped. And inside that we have our title, meta, and also the new paragraph for the post content. So that makes it uh, way more uh, easy to target and edit with CSS. So let me copy this uh, CSS class for our link element. And now let's start uh, with making the image uh, smaller. In my style sheet, I will be, I already started, so I have my post and I want to target my link. And let's say I want it to be 60% wide instead of full width. Let me save that. Refresh page here. Pretty good so far. And now I want my uh, wrapped content to also uh, be maybe 60% wide and overlap my image. So I will need to move it as well back to CSS. Let me uh, copy this because we'll be targeting three different archive pages each time. So we want to customize all of our archive pages and the wrap element. Let's say it's or actually we can maybe uh, leave the width, but use margin to um, to move it. First value is the top value, right, bottom and left. Maybe like so. Let me save. Very good. But we also need it to be on top of the of the image. So this needs to have a different Z index. But the Z index property only works wh when there is a position also uh, defined. Great. We also need to add a background. Let's say white. Some padding so our text isn't so close to the edge. Maybe a bit more padding. Okay, maybe uh, make it a bit wider, so not 40, but let's say something like that. Let's add uh, some shadow. Mm, I like big <laughs> shadows, so let's move it right and to the maybe right, not so much like this, but let's contract it a bit. And also it can be black. So let's say very light. 
will be even lighter, something like that. That looks pretty, I think. So it's a great start. And uh, maybe we can move it a bit further down, so more of, uh, so we can see more of our image. It was fine before. Lovely. Let me copy that. Actually, this is also different. Mm, sorry. Let me copy that. And back to my style sheet. Okay, that looks good. Saved. Nothing should change when I refresh the page. Very nice. Uh, we need to make some adjustments for mobile. Let me see how that scales. Actually, it's not very, it's not too bad for most of the screen sizes, I think, because we uh, the sidebar is at the bottom uh, below. Um, 980 and then we should probably make this text smaller uh, at the same uh, moment the default heading uh, is getting smaller so it's uh, 767 yes And we probably should uh, decrease the margins for for mobile for s very small screen sizes. So first the wrapper. Back to the style sheet, and let add, let's add a media query. Our wrapper. should maybe have smaller margins sorry let me it looks good I refresh Hmm, maybe top margin shouldn't be so so small. Twenty percent is fine. But then uh, when it gets maybe to four hundred, so your phone. Maybe let's make the image full width and put the content underneath, back where it was. So. Here, 20 and we'll remove the margin so it will be full width and we'll also uh, choose our image to be full width as well refresh Let me see what's on. Oh, the image has a bottom margin, which we don't necessarily need right now on mobile. So let's remove that. Refresh. Okay, that's better. Very nice, I think. With the shadow, we, we are sure which uh, which image belongs to which which title so that that's very nice maybe one more thing we can add is an image overlay so let's see to add an overlay to an element uh, it's best to use the pseudo uh, pseudo after element but the after can't be applied to 
to to an image it uh, but since our image is wrapped in a link in an a element we can uh, add this after pseudo class uh, on 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 that uh, on that part um, let me show you how how to do it so a with this class after and we need to define uh, content it can be empty we need to show it with display and we need to um, it's best to position it absolute if we want the overlay to appear on top of the element we need to position it absolutely Um, and we need to uh, add a background color so we can actually see what we're doing so background let's say semi-transparent uh, black okay great so um, let's copy this and we need to apply this on each on our archive pages so back to the CSS Mm. let's get our image but we want this to be on the after pseudo element okay that looks good let me just clean it up a bit okay great uh, if I save this and refresh uh, what, what else we can do we can actually um, add some uh, hover effect uh, so let's say we want to lose uh, the overlay on hover and maybe even uh, not while, while we hover over the image itself but the if when we hover over the um, the post so let me show you once again let's copy this so when we hover over our post we want to target the overlay let's change its opacity to zero but if we want the smooth transition we need to we need to add define transition property sorry transition mm, it's a shorthand will transition all the uh, properties that's the transition duration and type of transition uh, okay that should be nice i think let me refresh and now when i hover over my post i can see my image with no overlay you can use different color or uh, gradient even but uh, that should give you a good start so let's just check if our uh, changes apply to all the archive pages so let's go to some category each category has this nice effects mm. authors page it's the same tags also and our blog page looks good too so I hope uh, that was helpful. You can copy all the, um, the code I used from my blog post. And I also packed everything up as a child team, which you can download and install on your DV website and your blog pages will look exactly uh, like my demo page from this tutorial. But if you uh, 
feel like it's just too much code and you don't really know what you're doing, I have to recommend uh, you use my my plugin, Divi Toolbox, which I designed specifically to help you edit and customize your Divi website without writing any custom code. So it has all these uh, block customizations available and many more features. And in my um, next uh, video, I will walk you through uh, all the features of Toolbox designed specifically for, for Divi blog. So see you next time. Bye.